Hey everyone, ZBrush has recently released an iPad version and I want to walk you through how you can get started whether you're looking to sculpt on the go or from the comfort of your couch. Then I'll guide you with the basic intro of this app. Let's first discuss the pricing. Now there is a free version but it's quite limited and that's including brushes. And if you're familiar with ZBrush, know that it doesn't have clay buildup or damn standard which I would say is in the top 5 brushes that ZBrush users often use. Another thing is you also can't make your own custom menus or toolbars. I would suggest that if you're new to ZBrush to get the free one first, and since it's a stripped down simpler version, it's less daunting to learn from. And then just upgrade once you've familiarized yourself with the basic tools and would want more features. The upgraded version is close to having the same features as the ZBrush software, which maintains that professional workflow when sculpting on it. Z Modeler isn't there yet, but they've already said that it's in the works to include it, along with a few other missing features. You can get the upgraded version by purchasing it on the app itself, which I believe is 90 US dollars per year. Another way is if you're subscribed to the ZBrush plan or the Max on One package, you'll have access to it already by just signing in on the app. Okay, so this is the ZBrush startup screen. To get started, let's click on New Sculpt and here you can choose your starting mesh to work from. We have 3D meshes, primitives, and a lot of C-spheres, which is useful if you want to create creatures. As you create your sculpts and save them, which you can do by clicking this floppy disk icon over here, you can then access them on the My Sculpts section. Here's a sculpt of Winry from the anime Full Metal Alchemist that I've completely worked on just on the app. If you hold the save icon, you can also save as, with a renaming option, or save next where it will save incrementally with automatic renaming by numbers. Also in the top left are the import and export options. Okay, let's move on to navigation. So you use two fingers to zoom in, rotate, and pan, and one finger to rotate the object. Another way you can navigate is with the circular pad over here, which can also be used for a lot more other controls. If you've used ZBrush on the PC, this is basically your shift, control, alt, and space buttons. That being said, you can hold the alt and use the pen to pan, and with the release of it, you can zoom in or out. You can also rotate with a pen, and if you click shift, it will snap the view from top, bottom, sides, front, and back. This is useful if you want to navigate with only using the pen in your dominant hand, and this is actually what I prefer using. It may seem tricky at first, but you'll quickly get used to it. Now I want to discuss more of what this wheel pad has to offer. Holding shift will make your brush as a smooth brush as shown here. Control will make it a masking brush which you can select the different types here and Alt is the inverse of the brush you're using. As for most brush, it will add volume to your sculpt and holding the Alt will subtract it. And then the spacebar will give you quick access to the basic menu and your custom ones. Additionally, you can combine the keys, just hold and drag. Control Shift will give you the selection and trimming brushes Adding Alt with it will do the inverse, which is deselection. Moving on to this left panel here, we have the brushes, which is nicely organized into types or by the first letter. As for my workflow, I don't really need to go here because you can also customize to have quick access to it on the bottom bar here. This first bar is what ZBrush has chosen as the most useful default brushes. Besides the brushes, there's also quick access to the Gizmo, Dynamesh, Sculptress Pro, Zero Mesh, Subdivisions, and Boolean. These icons that have an arrow pointing in the corner means you just hold it to access the options. The other ones you can just click. Now if you swipe left, this is where you can have your own most used brushes pinned. To do so, click on this collage-like icon on the top right. To add your brushes, click and hold on a brush thumbnail, and you can select multiple, then drag it to the bottom bar. Notice the quick menu here. This is where you can customize your own different menus from when you click the space bar. The same process applies.
Going back to the left bar, we also have the materials. You can click the heart to add it to the favorite section, or similarly, you can add materials to the bottom bar with a drop down here from the same customization menu as the brushes. If you would like to import your own materials or brushes, bring it to your iPad files by airdropping or emailing it and saving it. Then move it to the ZBrush folder, Z Startup, Brush Presets, or Materials. Continuing on, we have the color wheel. Simply select on a color and click fill object or color pick with this eyedropper icon from a color within ZBrush. You can also select colors more precisely from the modifiers dropdown. Accompanying this is the sliders below. With the paintbrush selected, RGB will be enabled, but you can change it to apply only the material or both. Below that is the focal point, the brush size, and the brush intensity. If you use three fingers and drag up and down, it will increase the brush size. If you slide left and right, it will adjust the focal point. What I like to do instead is just hold the icon and drag up or down for either of these four sliders. The undo and redo keys are here, but you can do the shortcut two finger tap to undo and three finger tap to redo. Okay, so we've covered the left side, let's move on to the right side. Starting from the bottom, you have the usual guides to toggle from. The solo, transparency, ghosting on or off, polyframe, the toggle to frame the selected mesh or the overall object. And then there's local symmetry, which you can enable if you want to sculpt symmetrically according to the position of the gizmo. Above that is the global symmetry, floor, perspective, or orthographic mode, and finally the BPR rendering. Again, hold the icons with the shaded corner to reveal more options. The layer icon is solely to access the subtool submenu, while the one above gives you access to all of ZBrush menus. And again, you can bring some of these options to your own custom menu from the customization tab and open the pop-up by hitting the spacebar icon. I really suggest that you put your most used features to it because it's a real time saver. But anyways, this tab icon includes all of these menus, or what ZBrush calls palettes, like the tool which has that subtool submenu, but also all these other ones that's displayed below the layer section. Now if you want to keep it opened while you sculpt, or you want a quick access to it, just drag this dotted bar at the top and it will pin it over here. You can add more menus or delete the selected one from this circle icon. Lastly, we have this last row here. First is the timeline history, which similarly to the other sliders, you can just hold and drag if you need to go back in steps. If you want to pin it for when you have to do a project history or a morph target, click on the circle here. Then again, the customization settings as we've already discussed, and beside that is a help guide if you want to read more on certain features, and finally, we've got user settings. I'll go over some helpful settings to change. First in the input tab is the pencil settings where you can change the double tap gesture. Oftentimes, I might accidentally double tap the pen, so I don't want to assign it to something that may disrupt my workflow or alter my mesh without me noticing so I just stick to keeping it on lazy mouse. You can also assign the squeeze gesture for if you have the most recent Apple Pencil Pro. I don't have it so I just keep it off. For palm rejection, just keep it higher than 60 so your palm won't be detected and click things while you're rested on the tablet. Then for touch navigation, if you have it off, you can sculpt in your mesh using your finger but I just keep it on since I only use my pen to sculpt. Two and three finger tap, just keep it as undo and redo as it's the most convenient. And for four finger tap, I assign it on new polygroup, but just change it to whatever you want a quick action to. Moving down to navigation, for rotation and zoom speed, I put it as 1.25, and basically the higher it is, the faster the zoom and rotation is. 
but experiment and find what makes a smooth speed for your workflow. Next in Canvas, you can change the background color. I find the default to be just fun and not distracting. You can also add gradient by moving the range. Next up on File, you can disable or enable Quick Save. If you wanted to autosave, enable it and adjust the duration for how many minutes you want passed in between for it to autosave again. In UI tab, change to left hand mode if you need to flip the left and right bar. The thumbnail is to show or hide the silhouette displayed on the top left and cam view for this little model guide reference on the top right. Wheel size for the control wheel, which you can also change the icons as the Mac keys or key names itself. The rest of these below I don't find require any modification, maybe the pressure sensitivity if you would like, but other than that, that's pretty much it. I hope that covers all that you need to know to get started. If you have any questions, comment down below, and if you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more ZBrush related tutorials. Thanks for watching, see you next time.